share with you today in work sessions. So we'll start out with the high school SAT and ACT scores. We have those back now, and uh, Ms. Waddell will share those with you, and then we'll move into two other presentations. Good afternoon, board members. This afternoon I bring to you the um, high school SAT, ACT administration for the Randolph County School System. This is the historical data that we collect each year. The data included in this report is going to compare for the last five years of the SAT <coughs> testing from 2019-2023. In 2023, the average total score for the Randolph County School System was 1,111, an increase from the 2022 average total score, which was 1082. In 2023, 36 students took the SAT, which was a decrease from 85 students who took the SAT in 2022. This report also contains data from the last five years of the ACT testing, which is, as you all I'm sure know, is in the accountability model. Um, Randolph County Schools has offered the ACT to all 11th graders as part of that model under ESSA. <coughs> if you will um, look with me at page two of this document, you will see that the SAT is broken into two parts, and the reasoning test is on, results are on page two. In 2023, our students scored at the highest level on the reasoning test. If you go to page three with me, that is the SAT participation rate. It is predict predicted that the district will continue to see fewer and fewer students take the SAT as we go forward. Page three is a table one of the reasoning test, average scores for all of the high schools. You will see that broken down in the next four or five pages of this document. When we get to page six, there's a comparison of number of students taking the SAT from 2019 until 2013. We'll go to page seven. This is where the information <coughs> pertaining to the ACT starts, which is the test that all of our juniors are given. It summarizes um, student performance in the Randolph County school system from 2019 to 2023. Randolph County Schools has made a concerted effort to get all students in the 11th grade to take and perform well on the ACT. During the 2022-2023 school year, five schools increased the average composite score from 2021-2022. Randleman High School, Randolph Early College High School, Trinity High School, Uwari 612, and Wheatmore High School all showed growth. In those pages that follow, you will see average scores and participation rates for the ACT just as you have for the SAT in this document. Are there any questions? The board members, uh, as Kathy noted, when you look at this information, you'll see our participation rate. We talked about it this morning in leadership, I think it was, Kathy Rangles, when you came by. Um, our SAT participation has almost gone to uh, nothing, but it's... Uh, do a large part to the ACT's mm -hmm. increased popularity over the years, um, <coughs> as well as the fact that everybody in 11th grade gets it. So uh, um, that I think that speaks to a lot of it, would you not, Kathy? I, I don't think universities have said, um, said we're not accepting the SAT, but the ACT seems to have gained more emphasis. But Kathy mentioned something this morning, too. You know, you also have universities saying they're not using testing results mm -hmm. now. And so that started with, uh, we came out of the, I guess it was the pandemic. It was as we were coming out of the pandemic, we were hearing that. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know where that does or doesn't play. So we're going to continue to work with our kids and try to continue to get our um, performance up. 
So this was actually testing that was done at the schools themselves, though, right? Not where they went and paid to go take no. it. Is that still a thing? Do they still pay to take the SAT? Pay to take the SAT? SAT? You could pay. Yes, you can pay to take the SAT. Okay. The ACT is the test that's in the accountability model. Right. So as much as it is the test that we work with our students to get them to take and do well on it, we do that for two reasons. Because colleges and universities look at ACT scores, but it's a part of the accountability model for school, for all of our schools. Yeah. A child can still pay and take an additional time, right. just like yes. SAT. I, I, I cannot believe, to to school. to be honest with you, what, 35 children in the whole system took the SAT. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, we've seen it coming down, and in, I think the original cover memo, it shows that, looking at second bullet, where they noted that, um, but you've gone from 86 down to 36. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's and, a lot. And looking at where yeah, 287, 260, even that, isn't too terribly big of a number even back then it was already coming down so yeah. it's just a different different day a different yeah. situation <clears throat> yeah. so the school system pay for the ACT for everyone mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's part of the okay uh, it's part it's paid for for everybody in the state because it is part of the accountability model okay. the first time they take it <clears throat> And then if they take an extra. They don't have to take it for one time. <laughs> <laughs> That's our goal. Right? That's our goal. Yeah. Okay. And the composite score we want them to reach is 19. So as you see, we're not quite there yet. Our average composite for the Randolph County School System was 16.7. But the average composite score that we want them to reach is 19. <laughs> so the ones that, unless I'm reading it wrong, the ones with the exception of Trinity High School, ones who actually increased uh, the composite score all had less students take it than they did year four. If you had less students take it, your composite score went up. Do you think there's a correlation to that? Uh, well, maybe you, yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I know it doesn't matter whether it's a good or a bad correlation. I don't understand if you said we want more people to take it, we want a higher grade, you know, but uh, there's also the ones who are really going to probably use it. You know what I'm saying when I say use it. But, uh, yeah. um, but the other thing, I understand is, the accountability yeah. part, but I, I, I don't think everybody has to take the thing. The participation yeah. rate helps us when they all take it. Okay. Um, so that, that does matter to us. <laughs> I was just thinking of the math behind the average and the lower the number, the lower the divisor probably allows an outlier to have a little bit more weight than when the um, yeah. a high, high score can uh, pull it higher. Mm -hmm. One score can have more input than the divisor is less. Yeah. If you have a lot of people taking it who are saying, I don't even know why I'm taking this thing. I don't but, think it, they but then don't someone else would argue, <laughs> yeah. like, they'd argue the other way with me and say, well, the more participation allows an outlier the other way from having too much influence. Too. Sure. So, yeah. um, somewhere in the middle of that math is the answer. On, on quite a small number of uh, yeah. smaller number leads to a increase. And certainly, I think high schools are doing a better job of preparing students to take the ACT yeah. in the just the offerings that they give mm -hmm. high school students to get them ready, and they start a little bit earlier. We've learned that. If you start at the ninth grade, getting kids ready to take the ACT and not wait until they're juniors, they typically will perform better. It is interesting how the ACT was very rarely taken, in, when, you know, 30 years ago mm -hmm. or 35 mm -hmm. years ago, and it's how its presence has increased. Mm -hmm. it's more on the ACT than SAT. Thank you, Kathy. I don't know if they had ACT when I was there. to share information about the Say Something Anonymous TIF platform. 
Uh, Edwina Ashworth, Sheena Creech, and I have sit in on multiple uh, conference calls, webinars, uh, trainings, um, which has resulted in the information that we're sharing tonight with you. So as we go through the presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I think I'm going to use this already. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I got some anonymous things I want to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Mr. Burgess, if you use that, now just know there will be an investigation. Okay. okay. Well, there's one part that will clear him from being identified. So. All right. All right. So this, there is a general statute um, that does reference the anonymous tip lines and monitoring and response applications, and basically, is the Department of Public Instruction. Instruction and the Department of Public Safety are to develop standards and guidelines for the development and operation and staffing of the anonymous tip line uh, platform. Also, the uh, Department of Public Instruction, Center for Safer Schools, Department of Public Safety, Division of Emergency Management, uh, they are to implement and maintain an application platform for anonymous tip line and make that available across the state for all school systems to use. And they are also supposed to provide adequate training for all staff and students to use that platform. So just want to give you a little bit of historical background. Uh, we implemented Google Workspace for Education in 2014, and that included uh, the Google Office apps, Google Drive, and email for all our students. In middle and high school. And in conjunction with that, we implemented the Gaggle Safety Management Platform, which monitors the email and the Google Drive. And basically, how that works is it looks at any keywords that might pop up in an email or in the drive. And then, if it sees those keywords, it flags an alert to Gaggle, and then they pass that information <coughs> on to our district or school team. And we investigate and handle accordingly. And I'll have to give uh, Sheena Creech and Nan York and Al Smith credit because they were thinking about safety of our students from the beginning when we started implementing these platforms where students could, you know, communicate with each other and share files uh, between the platforms uh, to each other as well. So it was, appreciate them uh, being forward thinking in that process. So let me. I got a question real quick. Okay. So if we got, for instance, we all got an email not too long ago, and um, I looked over it quickly, and within maybe an hour, I went back, I was going to read it to see what all they were saying. I mean, it was pretty bad. I mean, they were blasting somebody on a lot of elected officials got it. So I went back, and it was disappeared. Is that kind of where it picked up? It was... Or did, would you guys just say you cleared it down here? It's, it's just, I mean, it disappeared like bam, like in no time. I don't know if that was full. Some and sometimes I just wonder if they the did it down here. If somebody picked it up. Uh, well, we, you guys we, got it. We can't take. It. Like, you can't get rid of an email like it, it went to the school email. Somebody may have pulled it back now, our system. Depending on you, delete it didn't know it. <laughs> you deleted it didn't know it. No, I, didn't <laughs> I went back. Depending on the platform, the user can actually use the bad email. Platform. <laughs> but, but what we're using only monitors our students' email campaign. I got you. Just <coughs> get it uh, so, so uh, again, in 2018, we started here in uh, conversations at the state level uh, that they were looking at implementing and requiring an anonymous tip line. Uh, and if you recall, in 2018, we had a lot of you know, school violence incidents across the nation that year, and I, I think that's part of what prompted this. But um, as, as soon as we started hearing those conversations, uh, Marty Trotter and Edwina Ashworth um, started looking at the anonymous tip line options, and because we were already using Gaggle, um, they had a product, a module, which is called Gaggle Speak Up. It just, and they went ahead and purchased that product. 
uh, in 2018, uh, December of 2018, and we went live with that in 2019, uh, January of 2019. So um, we were actually ahead of the game because the state, they actually uh, went with the Say Something platform, uh, and they went in contract with that in 2019 of July. So they signed a five-year contract, and they are to renew the contract for another five years, starting in 2024. Uh, this Say Something platform, there is no cost to school districts uh, to use it, and 90 to 95 percent of the school districts are using the Say Something anonymous tip platform, including uh, our neighboring school system. <coughs> Also, in the uh, general statute, um, any information that is acquired through the tip line is not considered public records uh, and shall not be uh, subject to inspection or examination. Any aggregate data that is collected, there is no identifying information on the reporter of the tip uh, or the school or the date the tip was reported. Uh, there is annual information collected statewide that is just the total number of tips that come in from the platform and they also collect the top five types of tips um, and that's reported to the Center for Safer Schools. So what the training does for the students and staff, uh, they teach everybody to recognize warning signs and threats um, and then to act immediately take it seriously, and then to say something, uh, either to a trusted adult or to report it uh, through the different ways they can report on the anonymous tip line. And basically that process is they submit a tip, uh, and then the crisis center, they process the tip, they vet it, triage it, categorize it, and then they deliver it to our team, uh, whether it's the school team or our district team and or it may even include 911. So the three ways that they can submit a tip is either through a website, uh, saysomething.net, or through a tip line, um, or through a mobile app loaded on your phone. Um, and that is the one feature that we currently do not have with our existing tip line. Uh, so this is a very convenient feature. We feel like it's more user friendly. Um, and kids are probably more apt to use something that's loaded on their phone because they're so used to using all the mobile apps uh, for you know, teenagers to use anyway. And kind of what that looks like is they just put in a password once they load the app, just you know, for security, and then they submit a tip and it gives them different tip uh, options that they can choose. Uh, it allows them to type in additional content. Um, they can even add an attachment. If there is sensitive information or explicit information uh, that they attach, uh, that is censored. And so only approved team members would be able to view that and you know, handle it accordingly. And the people who would be looking at this would be people in like the central office, right? Like you guys specifically. And administration. And yeah, the principal. Okay. So they do have a nationally accredited crisis center. Uh, they are experts, they're experienced, they're multilingual. Um, they're highly trained, and they are a real person that you know, respond to these crisis uh, tips in a caring and compassionate manner. Uh, and they are available 24-7. Uh, the crisis center counselors, they take four actions. They vet and triage the tip. They categorize the tip. They deliver the tip to the appropriate school team. Uh, if it is a life safety tip, um, that also goes to the district team and 911 uh, simultaneously. And then they finally hand off uh, the tip <coughs> for us to uh, handle accordingly. And basically, this is the criteria for a life safety tip uh, threat of. You know, bodily harm or death, imminent in progress or just happened, that's credible information. Um, they have the means or intent to carry out the threat and that it's actual and, and something needs to be addressed immediately. 
again, this is just kind of the protocol, a flow chart, a visual chart, if you will. Uh, you know, the tip goes to the Christ Center and then to the life, if it's life safety, to the three teams. Uh, and then non-life safety to the school team. Uh, and then, again, if it's a life safety tip, it's, it's handled <coughs> immediately 24-7. And then if it's a non-life safety tip, uh, it gives the time frames of 6 to 6, Monday through Friday, or 10 to 6 on the weekend. And then our uh, district teams, uh, again, we, you know, we already have these teams set up with what we're using now, uh, so we can keep our district team in place, and then, of course, the school teams, there'll be at least three on each school team, principal AP, or APs, if they have an extra, uh, could even include one of us uh, from the district, and then, of course, 911 if needed. Uh, they will provide a school awareness <coughs> material kit to each school and also the central office. Um, and basically it's just poster or, or signage, uh, one that says, you know, again, the three steps, you know, look for warning signs, uh, act immediately, and then, of course, say something to either to a trusted adult or report it via the three different ways we talked about on the tip line. <coughs> and then the other signs are just, of course, the different options the ways you can report it. Uh, the plan implementation process, uh, training of school teams and district teams during November, like I said, the district team has already uh, viewed the uh, training. And then uh, we will be sending out uh, the video that they'll be watching to the principals and APs uh, next week. And we also are having a live webinar at the principals meeting on December 6th. Um, all the principals will sit in and watch that for the middle and high schools. Um, and there'll actually be a live person from Say Something uh, attending that, and then they will also field any questions that they may have during that webinar. The training of students will be the 6th through 12th grade students. Uh, that'll be during the week of December 11th through the 15th. And as the school um, completes the training, you know, whichever day it might be, uh, then that basically that platform goes live as soon as they complete the training. And they'll be able to use it to report any tips. And then we'll also post any material that I showed in the previous screen throughout the school when they go live uh, for those from the trainings. <coughs> So that is pretty much the overview of the platform. Do y'all have any questions? Board members, we just wanted you to be aware as uh, you may start hearing what, as we start doing the training with staff and then obviously December um, we'll be doing training with students. This transition, um, uh, Death Oak Dale captured the history of this very well. Uh, we were out in front of it, our staff was before it really came as a requirement, so we were used to what we have been using, but we feel like at this point, and there were some things in the original, uh, to be transparent, there were some things in the original rollout to say something that uh, didn't, that, that I wanted to see them play out as did some of the staff. Um, so we feel like it's uh, several years later and it's time to transition most of the states on this and, and um, uh, we have a free resource. We need to start moving to it. It's shown to be effective, Dale. Everything we've got received back in our review. So um, it's either time to uh, move to this resource or to re-engage. And we felt like this was the time. So, so this is just just North Carolina schools, I guess. Well, I think they are used uh, other yeah. Yeah. states, yeah. but, but yeah. so <laughs> like when I go to the website. Uh, Say something. Dot was mm -hmm. it net? Where it was. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the first thing is submit a tip, and there's place that says search the school, mm -hmm. and so there's not none of our schools pop up when you put it in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Once once we ideal once Saturday they finish their training. They just go live. And, and on that, so no, it's not even the search. <coughs> yeah. as, okay. as they right. go live, the speaker for speak up will come down. Yeah. 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 For say something. So board members, you'll see the uh, speak up signs so that have been up for about four ahead. years. You'll see those for a little while longer, but as the school comes live, those they will come down. We need the children to know what is the appropriate method. Mm -hmm. 
mechanism you use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was one thing with the gaggle uh, again too. We were already using that platform back at that time, and uh, we already had our students in the system. Um, we had already done the training, so again, that was part of the reason we went with the gaggle speak up at that time. But you know, it has proven that this has been a reliable platform, and it does have the app feature, um, and it does look like the stages will continue, especially since the any other questions? Thank you. Thank you all very much. Okay, board members, before we get started, I'm going to skip order. And because I know what will happen at the end, I'll forget to even mention this. So, uh, your schedule events uh, document has been adjusted um, from what happens after tonight. So, just know that that's at the end of your uh, packet for the work session. Um, still don't have the uh, dates. It, it may take a little while longer for us to get the dates for public hearing on the county budget and the adoption of the county budget at the end. But, uh, um, so we'll go and also up there you see presentation of the budget to commissioners will be May 2024. We don't have the exact date. So the next thing, the thing I want to talk to you about a little bit tonight is a um, topic called growth. And um, I've got a document. Sheena, can, is there a way I can operate the... Yes, sir. Is there a way you can... I don't, I don't want to... Now, I'm going to probably have this messed up in a few minutes, so I'll have to get it back over here and take it back from me. But so, um, this is something I've been following, as I know you guys have. Um, it's something coming our way. Now, is it coming our way tomorrow? No. Is some of it already here? Yes. But I think I, I want to share some information and just some thoughts. These are just thoughts out there as we've talked about vision and we've talked about where are we headed and and um, because there's some really big stuff coming, it's going to be some different situations in our county. But so uh, possible impact needs caused by the uh, growth, economic growth, as far as it affects our school system. So there's a first stat. Uh, we have we received this stat, and and you know this is what we um, we've been Dale Brinkley and I've been doing a lot of this uh, up till now. Um, obviously, some other things are hitting different areas, but there's an estimate of 100,000 people coming to our county in the next five years. And so what's causing this? Well, this is not the whole picture, but this is some of the picture. Toyota, 5,100 jobs. Now, that is not a type of, if I talk about an expansion of a plant, I put additional jobs, whereas when I just, it's something new opening, I just put jobs. So Energizer, you see over that window of time, 143 additional jobs. Technomark, over that window of time, 220 additional jobs. Uh, Summa Tomo, I think that's how you say it, Forestry and Archdale, late 2024, 129 jobs. Axiom, Axiom Packaging is opening spring of 24, 129 jobs. Wolf Speed, we know where that is. If you roll out of uh, down 64 and you go across the eastern line of Randolph County, about within just a couple miles on the left, there is uh, Wolf Speed looking at you, and it's right out there on the road. It's a pretty, pretty massive building. 1,800 jobs, and then Benfast, um, <clears throat> down in the southern part of Chatham County, 7,500 jobs. Now, the thing about Benfast that I heard when they first started to announce, and I heard it early, and I haven't heard it since, because it really doesn't, it, it gives you a, a little of a predictor, but if I heard right, that was not the size they were coming in at. It was coming in much higher. And, and they were they backed down off that. So what are their expectations over time? <clears throat> and, and, and I heard that early and have not heard it since. But uh, it makes me think that BIMFAST is planning to grow if that's still in there and, and, or originally was planning to be bigger so who knows where they'll grow to. So that this is not all the development. 
But these are the big ones so far. 15,000, 21 jobs. There are some local companies that are have grown or are projection, projecting to expand 20 jobs here, 19 jobs here, which is, is, is great for our uh, economy and economic development. Um, and they'll bring more people as well. But here's something that's beginning. I heard so years ago I went to the um, BMW plant with the commissioners. It was probably my third year here. And I remember when we rode into the site, I could see the BMW, the big building. But I got lost because there was all there was other stuff. It was the suppliers. So the projection for Toyota, just look at Toyota must be alone. <clears throat> the suppliers and retail businesses that will pop up because of Toyota, they're projecting 2,500 more jobs for Toyota alone and 3,500 more related to Wolfsby. So now you get down and you're talking 21,000 jobs that we're talking about. And that's just, I just wanted you to see the picture of what I'm seeing in here and before I get into the next thing, which is the vision possible ideas for vision for where we're at as a school system because I think all of us know that anything that happens in this county is going to somewhere tie back to us. Somebody's going to be expectations of us. There's going to be expectations of resources for children who move in and for all children in this county. There's going to be expectation of facilities. There's going to be expectation of, of programming. So let's go to the next thing. So what does this mean for the Randolph County school system? Well, when I think about it, and this is just me thinking, me looking, brainstorming, dreaming, trying to create somewhat of a vision, where that vision lands, don't know. But I think it really means two things. We have to start making plans for more balanced use of our seats. We cannot afford to have some schools that are completely capacity and some that are at 52 percent, 48 percent, if we can help it. There may be some things we can't help. And we need to start making plans for where our future schools are going to be. So let's take the first one. What are some ideas for more balanced use of seats? Well, the first thing we have to do is look at what our current fill rate is of our schools. And we do that every quarter. Remember, there's a capacity column on that report that Atlanta brings, and we've been doing that since Mr. Cook, the fall of 2013. I remember the board member who asked, could we start bringing something? Um, and we have been doing that every quarter, just like the uh, quarterly budget update. And so the fill rate, where are we with our schools? Well, we know that we have, last time I looked, we have farmer at 48% full. I think it's... Uh, um, Randall's at 97% full, Hopewell's 96% full, and I do believe Franklinville's 52% full. Somewhere around that right, and then Tabernacle's 62%, if I remember right, somewhere around there. Southmont's 80. Um, we have more high schools down in the low 60s, I think 61 or 62, is that right, Edwin? 62. 62. So we first got to, what, what do we have? Where are we? Well, I can tell you, for 11 years, Randall High School has been bumping between 90 and the 97 range, percent full. Um, Is that figured with all the mobile units? That's just, uh, capacity does not include mobile units, no. Capacity does not include, but when you talk about capacity of school, you're looking on brick and mortar seats. So we, there's an issue there too. But um, they have how many? They have a bunch of mobile units. I mean, 20. What is it? I got it right here on the sheet. Hold on. Randall High School has 21. Randall has the most mobile units. It used to be 31. So it's down. It used to be. So when you look at the fill rate, then what do you do about the fill rate? What do you do about that, that bold statement? Ideas for more balanced use of the seats for students in our current schools. Well, you might have to start digging into our student assignment goals a little bit and trying to level off some things. And you can't, I'm not talking, anybody listening, I'm not talking about taking students out of where they are. Look, when we started down this road in um, uh, really strong in 1415, 
And we started saying, there's some rules for being released from our school system. You just can't come and say, I want to go to another school system. Uh, we had students in, in our neighbor's school, neighboring school system, Ashburn, and, and we didn't go pull kids back. We put, a, we put a pin in what was going on. And we had them going to other school systems, but I remember there was a lot of movement back and forth with uh, us in Ashburn City. But we've got to address that, what I put in quotes, whether it, may, it just rings with me. Some schools have a lot of seats, where some schools have few vacant seats. So how can, we, how can we start balancing this a little bit? One idea that comes to my mind is saying, we right now say no one can, if they satisfy one of our rules for reassignment, you can't go to a school that you're not assigned to if it's 95% or full. 95% more or 95% or more full. So do we need to bring that number down to 80 or 85 to start balancing some things? You know? You ask for, a, I mean, that's just a suggestion. That's not a, you know, we can come back with student assignment uh, changes down the road and, and probably need to do so more uh, specifically in the spring as we get ready for 24, 25, if there are changes we need to make. But that's just one that comes to mind. And then another one that comes to mind is the last one on there. Uh, what about adjusting school attendance numbers? An example of uh, possible action is maybe we go look at schools that are not 65% or more full, okay? And we start seeing what, what addresses, what, what areas of the county can be pulled into them. We just mentioned Tabernacle 62, Farmers 48, um, Frankville's 52. Um, we have a, we've got a growing problem already. What's Southmont? Southmont's eight. But we got a problem in the Northwest because if I remember right, uh, on that last thing report we did, is Trinity High School 88% full? Is that right? And so now we have one high school's 88% full, one's 62% full. We've got houses going up all around Trinity High School. So I think C's going to play a big when those houses come online. We might look seriously at where those houses go. Because otherwise, we're going to have trailers all over the campus of Trinity High School. I asked today, I was talking to a guy that uh, knew a lot about what's going on like it. Because I was talking to him, I said, you know, the way the lines are, like at Trinity, if you're the right of 62, you're feeding like Trinity High School, and the left, basically, you know, you're, if you, you're feeding wheat more. And um, he was talking about the developments, which is interesting. I hadn't thought about this. You see the houses popping up on 62. He said, they're not really a bunch of houses, you know. But he says, what you don't know yet is on the left of 62, like um, close to Sheets, back in behind there, and then um, where Fairgrove Fire Department is, close to Hopewell. He says, you really got two issues. It's, they're already clearing the land. Mm -hmm. And that's, there you go, that's sweet war. He says, you're gonna be stuck, you're, gonna talk, you're talking 500 houses before you know it going up in that area. He said, you, it, it's, it's just crazy what's fixing to go on. Yeah, and they, I mean, they cleared it all the way back. It looks almost back up into 85. Yeah, I mean, I didn't down, even know that was going on. He yeah, was talking about down, today. He said, <coughs> as I said, we may have to look at that down the road. And he said, well, I wouldn't look too fast because you're going to really have an issue if you don't do something at Hope well. Plus, but a lot of those kids in Steeplegate, and I mean, they do go a lot to Wheatmore, but a lot of them go to private schools. They really do more than you got would. so much accessibility in Yeah, Hollywood. I mean, you know, it's... Hope well, the other one right know? now is over 95, they're 96. So I think our two biggest uh, problems right now as far as overcrowding is Hopewell and, uh, well, I know there are two biggest issues. You know why they're Hopewell. so crowded at Hopewell, though? No. A lot, I mean, I know it's the area, but a lot of people got in because Spanish immersion, and we're going to have to pull back on that. And, and there again, here we go with some student assignment rules right there. Yeah, you know, it may not be the popular thing. It may, it may lead to some um, negative reaction, but we can't continue to let schools get up over it. We can't continue to, I don't, I don't know, I, I'm of the opinion we can't continue to drive 95% because here's what's going to happen, I'm yeah. afraid. Okay, so if you let a school get 95, you keep that rule in place and say, 
We're, we'll let you get up 95%, but if you get over that, we won't let anybody in. Well, are you sure in the 5% that you're reserving for the addresses or assigned at school, are you sure that's enough room for all the addresses? No, that yeah, great. It's not, I guess. Yeah. Maybe enough houses built yeah. quick enough. So, you know, again, the two bullets here, one under B and one under C, those are just ideas. There are some other things we can talk about and need to talk about as we turn to the 2024, sorry, 2024 for 24-25. But I just gave you an idea. That's these are the, this is what I'm talking about, and maybe that's not the right, that's what comes to my mind. Balance and the use of our seats. And and um, last board meeting, we talked about C. Is it time to look at attendance zones? Is it time to pull? You know, I don't think we want to pull, you know, from a school that's already under 65, pull addresses down, but we may have to pull some addresses to a school and pull some into the school that lost some addresses. I don't know. When I say addresses, they call them, a lot of times referred to them as attendance notes. You'll see that, or population notes. But um, for now, we just call it addresses. That's what it is. We've got these addresses that are, that are assigned to school X, and we have these are assigned to school Y. But so there's the idea of we go back up here. What does this mean for Randolph County school system? Well, we need to start making plans and have a conversation about a more balanced use of our seats. And if it means that we're pulling this this group from this school to the next school over, then that may be what has to happen. And I, I think that's going to have to happen. So we're going to have to get a position because. Right now, we're in a tough spot at Randall High School mm -hmm. at 97%. So if it stays around 97%, we're banking on right now that the development won't lead to more than 3%, of the remaining 3% be used by people who have addresses assigned to Randall High School. And I don't know that we can do that. Now, we may have to for a while to get it to work its way out because we don't want to go, I, I would suggest pulling students out of a high school after they've been there I don't think that's a, a positive for a kid or a, or a good situation, but we may have to, I really believe we're going to have to look at an 80 or 85 percent. Let me tell you, and I mean, I know you and I have had a conversation before, and I don't know, I guess most of us have, but I was, man, I was new and, and probably hadn't been here a year on this board, and if I had had a little more, you know, I was sitting... I should have spoken up, but you know, it wouldn't have done any good at the time. It really wouldn't have. But the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes was ever made when you built Providence Grove High School. You had the perfect opportunity to take more kids from Randleman High School and send them to Providence Grove. You could have left some more at Eastern. They had the room and it would have worked out. The mistake was made then, and I, you know what? I watched everybody else agree with it. I sat here thinking, well, you must be pretty, you're not smart. You're just new on here. Maybe you're dumb. But I was smart. They let it happen because um, <laughs> they were, um, they was two legends from both, one from Radlin, one for Easter. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, you can have this neighborhood, but you're not getting this. You're not getting this. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Hey, they had some expert coming in on lines. You know, I told you about, you know, looking at stuff. It didn't matter what he said or I would, it, it was, you know what? I guess I'll get quoted on that, but it was all about you taking this neighborhood and not taking that. And that, like I said, you know what? They're great guys, but that was not fair for the school system or Randolph. Of course, just for the record, you know what? It wasn't Donald Andrews. We had a superintendent, what I thought was pretty, pretty solid back then. He stood right there and never said a word and watched it happen too. So anyway. Well, here's the other piece you mentioned a minute ago, Mr. Cook, and I, I want to make sure I, when we start talking about balancing too now, you mentioned one side of 62 versus the other. I think we've got to be prepared for, it may not be this whole line marker this way. It might be this line marker this way and this note over here. It'd be easier for the build. Because... Well, I know, but, but like when you go down 62, when you're coming away from Trinity mm -hmm. High School and you're headed towards Sheets, some of what's going on right there may need to go to Wheatmore High School. It may need to. I know. I and, Even and, though it's and, closer and, to Trinity High School. 
Yeah, yeah, but but if, you don't, if we don't have room, yeah. if the question's going to become, the next thing's going to come. We started, when I came here, we had a 108 trailers. I do believe we had 108 mobile units. And um, we're down to 80 now. Yes, 108 in fall 2013. We're now down to 80. So the next thing is, if, you, if we don't, if we get in that situation and, and say we're not going to do that, then we're probably going to be in the position of putting mobile units on campuses. And, and um, we, we own 67 of the 80 trailers we still have. We have gradually been able to get rid of the ones we leased. When we first started, it was the 67 and the balance of that 108 were, were released. But, um, it takes me eight minutes to go to Trinity High School to my house. But my kids went to Wheatmore and it took about 15. Yeah. So, so, you know, there, there's the piece we need to, when we start talking about balancing, we, we might have to think about this node over here, even though it's not a, a, a line, you know, it's not a Highway 62 or a Highway 49 dividing. We may have to do that if, if this, with this growth that's coming, because it's going to come when it starts, it's going to come quick. You know, you ride around uh, and, and um, you see somebody, every time you turn around, you see somewhere else that's been clear. Just like the part down from Hopewell, I was coming from Wheatmore, went down to Light and turned on, you know what the name of the road is. I, that goes down, what's that road goes from Hopewell? Um, Ken, I know Hopewell. You, what do you mean, like where Hopewell? Road Wilburn. Right Wilburn. 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 Farm Road. What's that road you turn on? Isn't it Wilburn? Wilburn. Wilburn. Wilburn, yeah. So you get on Wilburn, head towards Hopewell, and then what you're talking about is right up there. It's on the left, and it's it's pretty deep back there. It's going to go, and and now if you go to Crestview and, and Zoo Parkway, you know when they start clearing that land, and I don't know that I'll be on Arizona or not. I didn't look, but um, when they started clearing it, it looked like maybe five or six houses. And now it's going on up into the woods. So because uh, they're looking at you go. On Zoo Parkway, turn down Old Fox Road, and just kind of there at Crossroads. Yeah. Looking at people in our house. Yeah, there. that's so. So you think it's best to kind of look at the pockets of where it's coming rather than if it's a city on land. to kind of redraw the lines for well, some of these schools like the Random and maybe pull them away and let Providence grow and have some of that growth? I'm not going to tell you what I think is best right, right. now, Ms. Whitaker. I'm just saying I think we've got to put it all on the table. I don't right. know that we're going to. If the growth comes at a speed that we don't have time to do, we might have to do pockets too. We might have to do some of all. We may have to adjust lines and do pockets. But see, even when that's a good descriptor there. A, a pocket of addresses pulled out of one school to another school, even though it might be the contiguous address to which we hope it would be. But I think you got some things to go up in the northwest corner. That may not be able to do that. I think no, it'd be hard that. there, but I'm thinking like what you, let's just say, and I know you have to do it like when you start here, you know you're going to be going to high school. You'd have to, you'd have to hit it right. Mm -hmm. But it is hard to justify, well, I'm going to build a new school here for such and such when all you'd have to do is, mm -hmm. it's like we did at Random and Elementary when we made that fifth grade academy at the middle school. You know, at the time you saved, I forget the amount you spent, but you right. saved building another school. $185,000. Yes, <laughs> and, you, and we've million. gone all these years now wow. without building another school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Trendy Middle was like, I mean, it really needed to be built. But if you hadn't changed that plan around, you probably wouldn't have Trinity Middle. You may, you may not have nothing built right now. It's Believe just the way you work it out. And at that time, that was the spring of 14, and elementary school was averaging about 19 million. So 185,000 versus mm -hmm. 19 million. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm afraid we're going to get into a, we might be getting into a bigger, bigger situation at this point. So one thing was balance, one thing I said that we were faced with was balance and use for our seats. Now here's the piece that is, um, this is a different scenario than building a new Trinity Middle or replacing an elementary school or replacing a middle school and combining a campus to make it the high school site, the remaining, the, the campus. This is a little different. This is going to be future schools 
based on growth. So let's look at some ideas. I just want to share some things that are on my mind. And um, as we try to chart our vision for what we're going to do here. So ideas for future schools. We need to be able to identify locations of population growth throughout the school system. And so you see that, and it is a little bit, it's very similar. Both of the major bullets are similar, but there's a, but there's a difference. We need to be able to get a handle on what has been approved, like Mr. Bowles, you're talking about there, the, the whole Cox Road, um, and um, what's been approved up off of Welburn, what's been approved down at the corner of Crestview and New Parkway, if that's still inside, in our zone. We need to find out what has been approved, and then there are formulas. There are projections that will tell you, based on the kind of homes being built, and the, the, the theme behind this neighborhood, or this neighborhood, or this group of homes, how many school-age kids could be projected from that? Because, you know, you can't wait till they get in there and then start going home to home and say, let's see how many kids you got and what age they are. That's going to be too late. But even more important, bullet one's important, but bullet two's important too. What is potential but hasn't been approved? And we've got to find a way to get out in front of this. So that's, that's a big item in our planning is identifying population growth spots. Okay? So, and with that, how do we project school age kids? Number. Now, this is one that's really on my mind. It's been on my mind for a while, Star. And so it's, in, it's written on purpose, B, purchase land for future school sites. So acquiring land for future schools is a risk. We've got a piece of land right now at Wheatmore High School for a middle school that we don't need right now. But it was acquired, what, we more opened in 09, right? Yeah. So that was a risk. We know we have that piece of land. That's all the land we have that's not being used. But the next bullet is equally important in my mind. Not acquiring land for future schools is a risk. And the reason I think that's a risk is we go, <clears throat> we now need to open a school. And at that time, we go look for the land. Well, that may be difficult. Or we go to look for a spot for a school because we need to get a school built there. And now we're five years down the road and I've, I've talked to uh, Commissioner Chair and Vice Chair about this issue. Now we're five years down the road. Other people want that land for other things. And now that piece of land sitting at 1.2 million is now about five, them five them or who knows what it is. So this is a piece that's got to be, we've got to, start talking about this, and the, the last item is going to kind of summarize all this a little bit. Here's another piece that we need to seriously look at, the Student Assignment Growth Management Department. Here's why. Um, obviously, we've got a student assignment process that is managed through student services, but it's going to be, it's, it, it has the potential to be a lot more intense, a lot more uh, involved. We need somebody in that department to start working with county staff members and municipality staff members. Because Dale and I have been doing some of this and people aren't, we're, we're not getting a lot of information right now. And that's not being critical of anybody. But what we do know is we may be able to get data from some parts of the county from the county staff. We may have to go to municipalities to get data in other places. I'm going to guess. Um, I, I've got an idea of where we might have to go to municipalities just based on the way uh, communities are structured, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's not negative on anybody. I, I think it's possible that a more urban part of our county, maybe we may be dealing with the municipality versus uh, we may be dealing with the county staff more for the non-urban parts of our county. But again, from that data, we're going to need some help trying to figure out what is the projected number of school-aged children? Like, across from Trinity Elementary right now, I ride by there and I just kind of wonder, are there two kids per condo? Are there three kids per condo? No kids per condo? Uh, I ride, when you ride towards uh, Pinewood, and there's the, the uh, development going across the street from the charter school, I'm going to bet 
based on what I hear and different things, I'm going to bet there will be few, if any, children, school-age children there. That's, that's, that's my, my gut, but I don't know that. But here's but another thing. Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll have any school-age kids. I think all them spots are already spoken. I was talking to one of the commissioners, all them spots are already spoken, except for very few yeah. of them. They all will be retired. Yeah. But now here's here's something right here. If you don't, if people don't think this is real, we're being, we've already been told of several things that are out there for sale. Um, land. But that's what this department, somebody would be responsible for. And it was the fall of 2022 when I spoke to the chamber at their retreat. And I've said it several other times since then that this development was going to lead to some more infrastructure needs for our school system. Somebody is going to have to have the responsibility of working with realtors and working on acquiring real estate. How will we, how will we set out? And remember, here's the, here are the standards for the state, from the state, excuse me. You need 25 acres for elementary school, 50 for a middle school. We have well more than that. I think we have 69 acres where we built Trinity Middle, so we were fine. 75 acres for high school. We know of a site right now that's 48 acres in an area we, we might be interested in, but can we get it to be 50 for a middle school? Who knows? So this is something, so you've got, first of all, we're identifying population. Another theme of this is purchasing land for future sites. Where do we go about, where do we go about to come up with, how do we go manage this whole process? Um, how are we going to manage it? I don't think the finance officer can do that. I'm not sure uh, the operations staff can do that totally, but we're going to talk about this piece. And I have shared this as well with our leaders and commissioners. Um, and then here. There are groups out there that specialize in getting some of the information that we're talking about. They they work with they work with uh, school systems and they go to the county staff and they know how to go to the municipalities. So, D explore the availability and contract with somebody uh, who work on these areas. Land acquisition help us with where do we need these land this land? What do we do about our attendance zones? Can can we get some some neutral and, and we've talked about this, some neutral view, but also not losing sight of staff's involvement in it as well, not just turn the whole thing over and say, hey, you go come back with a plan, we're going to approve this. Well, do we have a person, Todd, you might could answer this. Way back when, what did the Shear guy do? Did Colonel you hear Shear. what he was here, Colonel Shear? What yeah. did he do at that time? And I know... He got sick, you know, before we finished the high schools. Yeah, basically. Well, he, what was he, he doing? Was, he, he, he was over facilities. Yeah. Yeah, was he did. going out looking at land and stuff, though, trying to find it? Not I right. know he was looking during those high schools when we were building them. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit. A little bit. Then he got to working with that realtor. What's his son? The guy. They that, yeah, they brought him in. And, you know, when you bring them in, they're going to... Yeah, they're going to look out there. <laughs> they have signs in their eyes. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, this group right here, if we can find a group, there are groups out there um, that, that that's their expertise. That's what they do. They're used to going into county offices, county government offices. They're used to going in to um, municipality offices. And, and um, I mean, we've, we've, we've kind of Early on, we know that this is early in the game, and, and but people need to know we're coming to get this information. So we got to have. Well, what about because any relationships we build with the new businesses that's coming? Are there people there that we can kind of reach out to that they have any demographics? Because I'm sure some of their higher ups are already hired. Yeah, I don't. Um, but and I don't know that yeah. that would give us much time, yeah. to be honest, but it might be a resource that they might have somebody that states we're, you know, because I know like a lot of your local restaurants, 
will say that's why we don't get certain restaurants here is because they know the demographics of the people yeah. here they're not hiring I don't know if that's the same case for you know Toyota and Wolf Speed and some of these others you know they may say we're not looking locally we may look more in these areas well, the only problem with that is if they do that approach, then they're, I guess they, they would be telling their employees where you can and can't buy. Right. And, and um, you know, and, and that's the challenge we've got in the school system to make them want to buy here. What are, we, what are we doing as a system to make our system attractive to right. people moving in, too? There's going to be the challenges in the other areas of, you know. That, um, so, you know, I, I think we'll, I, I'd be hard-pressed to say that, we won't see any of this growth come our way. Right. I mean, um, I, I just think there's too much right here in our back door. I do believe that. that um, I, I, I've heard some things, you know, but I don't. I don't see. I, and maybe I maybe I miss it. Maybe a company will dictate you're going to live here, here, here. But I, I don't know that. Well, I'm not saying they would dictate. I'm just saying they might have ideas on where the people are coming from, yeah. to where they're saying, you know, if I'm moving in to go work at Toyota, I might be coming from California. I have an idea because I've done research. I want to live in Forest Oaks or whatever. You know, they may already have like little areas that they've got with people that they've already kind of got hired in. I didn't know if there was, you know, resources for that. Well, and one of the things with that is our our look is going to have to be a lot of what doesn't exist now. Mm -hmm. You know, what's right. you know where these where these developments are coming. So, um, so you know, we're, we're going to learn a lot through this. There's no perfect mm -hmm. answer to right. this. And anybody who says they know how to do this perfectly from start to finish there. Um, I know this. I know a school system that, that years ago, since the early 2000s, what they were doing did not pick up apartment complexes. Okay, so it was picking up everything else, but it didn't. And the process they used in those days uh, did not pick up apartment complexes. So you can imagine a new apartment complex goes up and a uh, much more urban area, but that was a uh, there was some surprises mm -hmm. at schools because of that. So um, I mean, I mean, you know, we, we talk about building schools, and, and and I know you probably had these talks with the commissioners and stuff. It's sort of like they told me at the fire department one time. What well, good is a big building with a bunch of fire trucks in it? Ain't nobody there to run. That being said, you know, our commissioner is going to have to open their eyes, too. You know, we've been working on this supplement for years and years, upping it. If we add extra seats in our schools, if we build additional schools, we got to do something to attract teachers. I mean, mm -hmm. y'all know how it is every year. Yeah. And, you know, you got 100 more yeah. teaching yeah. positions. Yeah. We're not going to have to make it attractive bring those 100 employees in here to teach. And we can't max out of school and then have two classes on the Zoom call. Yeah. We're learning. I mean, it just didn't work. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, this here's a two-way street, you know, and it all comes together at the intersection, and and we got to have those talks, too. And I, I know how you think, and most of the time, anyway. Well, the state didn't help us when they took the best, one of the best perks for working for the school system, and you know, took it away from, you know, you, you people looked at the retirement and, you know, we yeah, got this. You might not make a lot of money now, but yeah. that was yeah, a good And they took that, that away, so that, that, that was nice. Yeah. But you know, all this and uh, all, I agree, but I don't, I don't think, you know, I, I think the one of the big problems right now, too, and I agree with the land and all that, you've got to <clears> be ready. But we're going to have to do something to, I don't know what we're going to do, twink it or adjust some lines or something to address the farmer, Southmont. That's pressing. I mean, even, and, it, and I, I thought about what can we do to fix UR, you really still the numbers. And you know what? That's the one thing that they made, the AT tax lines killed. actually killed. Yeah. If, and I mean, you know what? <laughs> If I thought it would help, I could care less. And I know it would cause an issue, but it, you know, I just wonder how many people, if, I don't know how you legally do it, but would you, we, would you, I mean, they're paying 18 times, you know? But you know what, they're driving probably 
they could go three miles probably in four and be at Wheatmore, mm -hmm. but I mean not Wheatmore. They could be at uh, yeah, you are, but they're going to have to drive all the way through and through all the country, probably 20 minutes, some of those people, uh, to get to Wheatmore do, Middle. Do we, I know, mean, do we know how many people in that area, Tabernacle, well, by Kennedy Farm Road, that area, that pay, pay or do we even allow them to do it, to pay the Trinity, be out of the Trinity tax base, but pay Trinity taxes to go to Wheatmore? Because right now you can be within four or five miles of Wheatmore, and you want to play sports, you're driving 25 to 30 miles to South Coast Randolph. Yeah, I mean, you look, so I don't look. Do we, Probably you are right. Do we, is that something we can open up to somebody out of the Trinity Tax District? I mean, they would still be paying that UR tax UR district, UR but I mean, I, but I've had people ask me, why can't I go to URA Middle? Yeah. We're looking, yeah. at, looking at first quarter 2023 24, to a week more high school people reassigning to attend. <clears throat> Looks like um, where 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 they all are. It looks like uh, a total of sixteen, eighteen, thirty-five. So, the problem, the problem, I mean, school. I mean, so what? then the problem becomes too if they're and then it looks like admissions. There's another twelve, but the problem is you pull them out of Wheatmore. Now we've got a more another issue there too. Um, but uh, the the problem that always has been talked or the issue has been talked about is above 64, where that AT line is. Where is it exactly? Do you know? No, I, See, I, I can't remember. It's, it's pretty close, it's, but it's it's. Uh, but there's always been the conversation about people right above there, and you mentioned they're paying AT tax, so. When they're going, the, the likelihood of them going where they're paying taxes yeah. is strong. Yeah. But I mean, they could still go to UR Bridge to UR if, if they wanted to, then come back to Wheatmore High School. I mean, if you if it was closer for middle, because it's going to be closer for high school. That's something we've never threw out there. But I mean, I don't know. But I mean, you'd still be paying it. But as an option there, I wonder if to keep from driving. I just wonder. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I, know, I mean, you get to Southwest. Corner the county is it's rural. Yeah, we know that, and and I I don't know what the square miles is for Yari's attendance zone, but God, there's there's kids who live in New Hope who are a whole lot closer to the Southwest, and there's kids who go to Yari is a whole lot closer to Randleman. Mm -hmm. I'm talking real close. I mean that district is so spread out, and I know it's probably spread out because it's so rural. Trying yeah, to get the numbers in. But yeah. Phil was talking about, I don't know of any worse place you could put a school in there. Between that and Erms. Yeah. Are, I mean, that um, was the bring it another bring side of the world. Well, the, well, the Tabernacle area years ago, and this is probably back before Dr. Ganey was here, I can't remember, but there was supposed to be a bunch of development out there, which I ain't going to say names or nothing, <laughs> who put a stop to it. So that probably were looking for that when they built that school. Yes. Well, it was right before 9-11, 2000, 2001, when all that was going on. And a lot of it was for boats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Gang, what, uh, you have any idea, I mean, just approximate, you know, with uh, Part D there, um, what that would cost? <laughs> you know, um, not not what you would think. It might be a. It would probably be, it would be a service contract. Might have to be a contract with uh, materials because materials we produce. But we've heard ranges of uh, thirty thousand. So you know, okay. it's not um, a whole lot cheaper than hiring. But it's just a matter of how Absolutely. long you kept with them and what the window time was. We we'd have to look at that. I mean, we we have uh, we know of at least one group who does that that does it and has done. The neighboring school system as well. So uh, we definitely need that. Does the county commissioners have anything like this place now? Maybe they're using. Not that I know. And so that's what are, what's that's what are the conversation. What are they using as a project growth? They were supposed to be doing a study based on growth. Do you know? I don't know what they did for that. Nobody knows. But we would go. So Mr. Lanier is asking what the commissioners use to project growth. 
We would go in and get our own numbers in their community, straight up, and, and, and uh, yeah. go from there because that's what a group like Indeed would do. They would go capture the numbers and, um, you know, we might <laughs> parallel back to that county report, but um, I don't really know what all that report entails, to be honest. Uh, I, can't, I can't give a straight answer. Ask. You, but you, you <laughs> seem like they would have something. They, they should be projecting. They should be projecting. You know, yeah, when, you, when you ask them, we're, 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 we're doing this. Well, it would be nice so to be able to see what they do. Yeah, don't quote me on um, that dollar figure, but uh, they have had some conversation. Give them a chance. But and also. Here's the other thing is, when does the time that they would contract a group like that might contact, contract with us? We have to look at it, but I think that's a, that's a viable, that's going to be a, a going to play a role some way, somehow. Do. Do you, yeah. It's scary. If you have, we raised an estimate. You know how many, uh, how many elementary schools do we have that are less than 25 acres? I'm not a real good. Looking at a piece of land, tell you how many acres. Sort of like I was telling Gary over here. I, mean, I know that some of them probably yeah. have come in on Grandpa. other standards. Right. I know that's just a, uh, I, I would doubt a suggestion from the stuff. Just yeah. think about like Grace Coley. Chapel. I would doubt there's 25 acres, but maybe yeah. it is. You like Coleridge, probably. Uh, Coleridge. Well, that does go back pretty far on those ball fields. But again, I, I don't have. A, I'm not a real good not view of a piece of land and tell you how many. Well, I mean, I mean, it's like I said here to tell Gary, I said, you know, I said, if, if, and if that follows state regulation, state regulation, then it's not regulation, suggestion. But if, if, if the county had water and sewer, I mean, you figure on an elementary school, five or six acres is took up for nothing but sewage system. Right. Yeah. Do you know any of these companies that would be willing to come in and just give us a overview or whatever? Yeah, we've already. Maybe something we want to entertain. We've just already to come uh, see what they got. We've already uh, had some conversation with one already because they know it's getting ready to happen. They're already they're working in the neighboring system now too. Uh, there's not. I'm not against that a, a whole lot. <laughs> 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 I don't need somebody coming and tell me, hey, you need to do something around the high school. I'm like, right. okay, yeah. great. Hey, pay me thirty thousand dollars. I'll tell you, we need to do something around the high school. I try to look 15. <laughs> but, mean, you know, but, the, the, but if they look at the whole system, I, I you can't hire somebody to do it for 35. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't want to be in the same situation that Gary was however many years ago. Either words, you've got people sitting yeah. here and we're saying we see one thing and then somebody it, else you right. got it's another here and said, oh, but you've got the ears thing. that's yeah. not in the middle of it. It is. Yeah. And see, but, we actually had a guy from state, and I told you that. He came in, and I think we spent remember it was several thousand it wasn't crazy but he came in with the big maps and uh, you know the little yeah, where the growth is going to be and all that yeah. and had it this is what this is where we see you know this mm -hmm. that a pretty pretty good job of it yeah, yeah. and uh, I'll never forget it and uh, I was thinking dang he's pretty smart I really was mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when it come down to it I'm telling you, they didn't listen to nothing. He yeah. said, "Now I, I, that really, yeah." And uh, and then when it and, and when it comes to doing the drawing the lines up in Archdale Trinity, you know what? It was myself, Miss Coltrane, mm -hmm. Paul Guthrie, and um, Tommy. Tommy, I mean, we that, we sat down and had meetings. We had meetings with Marty and all at the time, and basically. I don't, I don't want to say we come up with half of those crazy lines, but we did to a point. But we should have probably listened to him more. I mean, we did a lot better job than they did because we tried to balance it. Right. And we did a pretty good job because when we built Wheat Board, <clears throat> the biggest thing you heard, Trinity was crying because we don't have enough students. We were just like 6'10 or whatever, you know, when we were. <clears throat> But we were open around almost 800, 760, 780. And look at it now, Trinity has more kids than Wheatmore. So, you know, that, and I always thought it's going to, it'll happen, you know, and it did. I mean, 
But the one down at Providence Grove in, in Eastern, in the Randleman thing, that was that was a mistake. But they should have listened to that guy. But it, it may not be as easy as that. I mean, just in that situation there, um, and where you told it, okay, maybe some that are currently in high school, you know, Randleman High School should be going to a Providence Grove. The, the problem is, okay, maybe, maybe not there. But the problem is whenever we say, Middle schools follow the high school. Well, there's a very long drive from that area to go to NERMS. Mm -hmm. So, whenever you, you know, there may be a, a part F there that may say we <laughs> may have to right. uh, change more of the lines for that. Okay, you may have a kid that went to Ramblin Middle that now goes to Providence Grove, or you may have a kid that went to whatever. There's plenty of other except you know, but if you, where you don't necessarily say, hey, we have to follow by the middle school. And uh, because that's a, um, I mean, I wouldn't, I would not want to drive from, whenever he's talking about adding that area over there, that some more kids need to go to the province, I would not want to live over in that area in Randleman and drive all the way to Nerves. Uh, I want to live from, in New Salem and drive know, all the way Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a really? not an easy drive, and, you know, so, uh, so I think there's, there's a lot more to it than sometimes just to, than that thing, so. so. I don't have a solution, I just have, just, I can just put, uh, Fingers at the problem. You know what I'm saying? Well, the lack, the and the and the final idea of all this is at some point we are going to have to kind of get us a plan together as a staff and board, mm -hmm. and we're going to need to take it to the commissioners and um, get their support. And you know, I just put, I don't think you looked that plan too far out. I think ten to fifteen years maybe. Uh, I wouldn't say too far out because you don't know what happens out that far but um and and when you start talking about a plan you're talking about what a school project look like maybe we don't have you know when we did the the nine-year plan um we got to year six or year five it was may of 18 if i remember right and the children's system went out east of randolph right before exams we got the only portable children's system on the east coast of this country to make sure school was okay for exams. And we, we survived that. And then July of 18, the children's system went out around the high school. And then we started looking at our nine-year plan. We said, this needs to be adjusted because we don't have a lot of HVAC presence. And so uh, year six of the plan was um, the first year of the revised nine-year plan. So. With that, we'll leave opportunities for some some revisions as needed as we watch things develop or slow down. But I just think we, we're going to have to we have to get to get uh, geared in on this sooner than later because um, uh, probably right now there's probably a school that needs replacing right now. Uh, what does need replacing right now? But you know, that's the whole, what it took us a year to get ready to, it, it, take, it takes us about a year from when you say you're going there to get ready. And, and Trinity Middle, the thing we didn't deal with was land. We had to piece of land. So that wasn't even in that process. We really only dealt with Trinity Middle, the contract, getting the contract and getting the design ready. Uh, we didn't deal with the land. So that's going to add some months to some of these, some of these projects. Well, that school you're talking about, I'm sure, is elementary school in the East. Well, would you, I know you look plan, but in your opinion, and I don't live on it, wouldn't it be better to find land a little more? I mean, you yeah, wouldn't really want it right there at work. Yeah, we're probably not going to be able to rebuild right there. We don't have That's what I'm thinking. You like that. So, but there again, we've got to get something more firm <coughs> because. At some point, we're going to have to interact with our commissioners in a formal way for not only the pursuit of land. You know, Dale and I can, you know, before, you know, whether this whole piece right here comes to reality or not down the road, Dale and I can't go, or Dale, Larry, and I, or Dale, Marty, and I, because, you know, we turn to we turn January, we can't go out, I mean, shopping for land if we don't have everybody behind us. You know, I think, and, uh, I think we need to seriously look at that area 
I think you're gonna have to. I think you gotta make a plan to stay with the area. Start on it. You're gonna have to do something. Land for housing development is spread over thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars an acre. There's two pro there's two projects right now that really, in my mind, we can talk more specific about those as we. I don't think tonight's night. I don't want to get too far out on it. But there's two projects in my mind that have nothing to do with growth. They have a, they have. A lot to do. One has a replacement issue, and the other one has how to manage a site better and get it prepared for a long time in history mm -hmm. or in the future. Let me say that, not history, in the future. And that that will involve building a replacement school someday. And that's the thing that people say land, you got to look at it and buy it. You got to know somebody geological. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want to get rocks. I know Ash County, they went and purchased land to build a new middle school, bought it. Guess what? When they start work, the soil will not hold a school building. Mm -hmm. So here they are selling a big track of land. Oh, it's useless. They got to go buy more. Wow. So, so you got to what I, buy. the whole reason for tonight is it was not for any decisions or anything of that nature. It really was just to let you know some thoughts that are out there and try to uh, let you know where some of the things that might need to be involved and we'll need to talk further about what our vision is for this growth and for our facility issues because, you know, and, and I, I totally concur with you, uh, Mr. Bowles, that teacher supplements, staff supplements are paramount and they're going to have to be because we've got neighbors all around us that um, exceed, exceed ours, and now we are, you know, one of the things you've got is we, we haven't had this economic development, but it's here now. To the tune of 21,000 dollars. Well, sure. <clears throat> and that's not all, but that's, that's a right projected, now. and 15,000 are for sure. The other well, 25, the other 6,000 were the suppliers and retail, that has come from analysts. That, that's oh, good data. I, that's um, but um, good local data that has been shared. Uh, it came from our EDC, our Economic Development Corporation. So um, uh, I don't have any reason not to say, what if it doesn't come in as high? You're still talking about somewhere between fifteen thousand, twenty thousand jobs, mm -hmm. and that's not counting some of the other places like. Uh, Craftsman Trailer, PIMCO, so some of the local groups that are expanded by, you know, you expand by 20 jobs, 15 jobs. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. And, and so. And you forgot Burgess Enterprises. <laughs> 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 well, Joe, uh, I, mean, I don't know these four. That's all we know about. What Tracy is saying is very accurate as far as on the, with the county commissioners there. And I know they know this, but sometimes they need to be reminded that the county commission spent millions of dollars to attract Toyota to come here. Mm -hmm. And if they don't increase our supplements, all we're going to do is we're going to lose teachers to work at a place where they just paid all this money for them to, to come work yeah. at. And I'll tell you something else, Fred, you're right, not going to have any classified staff. Yeah, you're going to have people say, I can go over there and work, make more money. So, I mean, if the county commissioners are willing to put all that money into Toyota to, have to build that spot, they might want to say, we want to put a little bit of money into our school system for supplements so we can keep teachers working in our school system rather than making batteries over there somewhere. We're so, already well, there. Yeah. And we're going to have to keep there. We're already looking teachers for guys. I mean, I know it's pretty important. It's one thing to talk about, but it's going to be continuous move. I don't blame Well, there's got to be some incentive for the young people to want to go to college to become teachers, too. That's a whole big. Another side, side, yeah. side show. Yeah. So that's, well, members, that's all I have for you tonight um, for our work session. Any other questions regarding this? Just uh, call me. Let's talk if you have thoughts or ideas. Um, I'll continue to work with uh, staff and, and uh, we'll figure out. Well, we go from here, but I do believe we need to, you know, sooner than later, start crafting out in some work session type formats what our master plan looks like so we can start presenting it for the commission. <coughs>
Hey, one thing when you're talking about, we had the land, you know, which we all know the story behind the one at Freeport and all that. But one of the smart moves, I think, this board, it was this board mostly, when we pulled back, when people were saying, what are you going to do with Braxton Craven? You know what? We could have jumped right out there and probably sold that to some realtor coming. That's smart. We should never... We still don't, they don't make more land. We should never park with something like that because we're going to need that down the road. And that's a nice piece of land that are medium. Yeah, I had to feed it a little bit now, it's sitting there. But of course, the gym's historic and the gazebo is now <laughs> history. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, the old building there, but across the street and all, if you ever need, I don't know, a ninth grade or something, that's a pretty nice facility to. It's a nice piece of land. You got you got some room to uh, to grow well, we, there. But we need to be careful because yeah, it'll be a nice spot for a ninth grade center. But I don't think that's our first move. Right? No, I don't think so either. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying, yeah. don't if you we look far enough. I mean, you know, we way down the road there, but that's smart that we look at. Okay. And um, you know, you got another school right down the road that has. Facility setting close on it too, you know that we're using for something. I mean, you know that's good options yeah. for a crowded school if you already have the. Yeah, I don't think on. we need to. I think that land needs to stay with us. Absolutely. I just, I'm thinking, you know, once I'm long gone, not to say anything. People you need to hang on to what land you got. I guess what I'm saying. All right. Well, this concludes the work session, and we will uh, wait for me. I guess the first one we. Uh,